Hi, I'm going to briefly discuss what the Kubernetes NDOTS issue is and then show you how you can use Pixie to see if this issue is negatively affecting the performance of your applications. So an advantage of using Kubernetes is that it seamlessly handles service discovery. A service represents a virtual IP backed by a set of pod IPs. This makes your intranode communication really easy and portable. A service can simply use the virtual IP for another service rather than include the full domain. Now, DNS resolution is dictated by a pods, etc. resolve.conf config file. I've got an example of one pulled up here. There's three things in this file. There's the name server, which is the IP address where DNS queries should be forwarded to. In this case, it's cube DNS. We have five local search domains here, and I'll get back to those in a second. And then we have an n dots optional configuration value. This is the threshold for the number of dots which must appear in a name before an initial absolute query will be made. With an n dots value of five, any name containing less than five dots inside it, the syscall will try to resolve it sequentially going through all the local search domains listed above before trying an it as an absolute name. Any name greater than with greater than five dots will be considered fully qualified, and it will just do the absolute name uh, query first. A fully qualified domain name is a domain name for which there are no local, no local search will be executed, and the name will be treated as an absolute one during the resolution. You can make any name fully qualified by adding a period at the end. So let's look at Pixie and see um, this in action. So I've um, got Pixie installed in my cluster, and I've pulled up the script of the week DNS external FQDN list script here. Now this script, uh, Pixie traces all DNS traffic in your cluster automatically without instrumentation, and it pairs the DNS requests with responses. So what this script is doing is it's looking at all those DNS requests, and it's looking at the ones that were resolved successfully and pulling out those fully qualified domain names. Now, I filtered out anything ending in uh, .local or .internal so that I'm only looking at the external um, names. So here you can see the number of requests, and we can sort it by number of requests and um, the fully qualified domain names. Now, here's where we have an opportunity for optimization. For each one of these external names, we can see how many times it's, since all of these have less than five dots, we're gonna look at how many times they're bouncing around with the local domain names um, first. So let's look at one of these. Um, and this link will take us to another script, which uses the FQDN as a substring, again, searching all of the DNS requests in our cluster. So we've used this name, um, not as a fully qualified domain name. And so you can see here that it's um, trying this name with .cluster.local, um, .google.internal, basically all of the local domain names specified in that resolve.conf file that we were looking at. And you can see over here the number of requests that were resolved, or the number of requests for each of these queries and the percentage that were resolved as well as the latency for each of these requests. So the impact on your um, application performance will depend on the number of requests as well as the latency, but you can use these two scripts, um, let me go back up to the first one, to see um, if any of your external um, name resolutions could be made fully qualified.